Hi everyone. It is it is March 24, 2019. I have been noticing more uh, comments of subscribers asking this question. It it's posed in you know different versions, but essentially the question is: Is it done? Are we finished? The American experiment is it dead? Is there any coming back? from where we are? And the short answer is no, there's no coming back. And yes, we are done. Now we just sit and watch the demise, our own demise. Oh, Carol, you're so hopeless. No, I'm not actually. I just don't you know, give in to false hope. When we are seeing so many people here in this community who were awake and now have decided to go back asleep with this guy, they jumping on board the Trump wagon, not seeing that he is the same old, same old. They're refusing to acknowledge all of the evidence that proves that this guy is just as immoral, psychopathic, narcissistic as the last guy. They just will not take it in. You know that we're dead in the woods when those who are awake go back to sleep. Because the only chance that we had was with those who were awake. But wait a second, that awakeness thing is really mm, not quite right. Uh, it's a misnomer. It's an awakening. It's uh, one does not just wake up one day and be awake. Oh, I got, I got it. I got all the agendas. I understand history and I understand all of these agendas and how they uh, work together. Everything is connected and I get where we're going. And well, that's not a good place where we're going, so I am going to get out there and take action to fight against it. How many in the awake community are there? No, very, very few are. You know, this, uh, this community itself is really, um, I don't know, maybe priding, priding itself, their self for being awake. And yet they sit back and do nothing. So yeah, we are dead in the woods because of our failure to organize, to come together, to stand together, uh, as opposed to the unbelievable, stupid fighting that goes on over, over things that one, it's like, okay, are these people just wanting to engage in all of this immature um, tearing down of individuals based on somebody's belief, not if someone else doesn't believe what they believe. Oh my God, we're in so much trouble. You got to believe what I believe. And if you don't believe what I believe, then I'm going to tear you down. Well, that has prevented prevented any anything positive happening here. Um, and we have to we have to get honest, you know, the truth. Most people are not about the truth because the truth is not selective. It, it requires looking at the truth of oneself. And when you have a whole lot of people who understand what is taking place in the world, but don't understand their own self, then we're going to have a very, very, uh, well, a community filled with just very immature, um, stupid stuff going on, fighting with one another, and 
uh, nobody really caring too much about anything in terms of what is happening. Where are we going? The loss of our freedom, our rights, everything. But look at just the Trump supporters, okay, who were awake, quote unquote, awake. Um, so many. We've lost all of them. They have decided to jump on this wagon and defend this psychopath to the end. Trump administration claims ISIS completely defeated in Syria. Again? Wait. Uh, that, I guess, was last Friday. Trump the defeater. Yeah, Washington declared victory over ISIS 15 times since December. Are you not listening to all of the lies? Are you not listening to what this guy says? Now, and anytime he announces victory over whatever, ISIS, border war, wall, it, you just believe the crap that comes out of this guy's mouth? A whole lot of Trump supporters who are awake do. It's frightening, actually. What happened to their brain? It, it, you know, we were all on the same page during the Obama years. I guess, you know, that yes we can mantra of Obama's that, oh my God, it just was like hypnotic and everybody was saying, yes we can, yes we can. Trump comes along. Make America great again. Yeah, make America great again. Make America great again. And then you have to. You've got to believe it and you've got to defend that this guy is doing just that when he's not. He's lying through his teeth. Um, U.S. military now preparing to leave as many as 1,000 troops in Syria. Well, he was supposed to be pulling the troops out of Syria. Yeah, that was an announcement a couple of months ago. Now we're leaving troops in Syria. You know, it, it's very odd that everything is so obvious now. And you do have, and I'm focusing on the quote unquote awake, you know, because they're the ones who are not, apparently not, choosing willful ignorance, right? They're not the quote-unquote sleeping crowd. They're the ones who know what's going on. So, um, what do they do with this information? What do they do with this information? This is a very, God, um, this is really fascinating. When we're all on the same page during the Obama years and then all uh, so many are now they've put themselves back to sleep but in a really bizarre way it's like it's almost like advanced advanced uh, confirmation bias in their brain, brains or advanced um, delusion I don't know um, they've graduated from 101 delusion to, uh, to 2.0 delusion. So I can be awake and maintain my delusion that I've created just now when this guy came in office, that he is making America great and he is fighting for us despite all of the evidence that, that proves otherwise. I can maintain that delusion because it works for me. It works for me. Finally, we got a guy in the White House who's fighting for Americans. Yay! So I can sit back and do nothing and just go on, never changing. I can go on living my comfortable little life because I have that delusion in my brain that makes me feel good. That guy in Washington, D.C. is fighting for us and he's going to make it happen. He's going to make America great again. Really. We were, the, the start of this country was lies, murder, rape, pillage, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of God. Yeah, okay. So we bought that. We never resolved that lie. 
We just continued lying, 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 lying. And what is the result of that? We're dying from lies. So, Americans are part of that. Trump supporters are part of the killing of this country. Uh, Christians are part of the killing of this country. Anyone who buys the lies because it makes you feel comfortable and you feel good and you can just go on and just think that you're good. What's the definition of good? Does it mean being nice, non-confrontational, and, oh, I'll help my neighbor, you know, pick up some groceries for my sick neighbor. That's not the definition of good. Good. Well, everybody should think about this and really meditate on it. For evil to spread, all it takes is for good people to sit around doing nothing. You get to see good in a two-legged. When that two-legged hears about some injustice going on and they can't not take action. They have to take action. They have to somehow become part of the righting of the wrong. We don't have very many people like that. When they hear lies come out of somebody's mouth, they have to say, you're lying. And I don't accept it. So either you do something to stop lying, or I'm done. How many Americans do that? We put up with so much crap because we too are part of the crap and we don't want to be confronted so we don't confront anybody lest they confront us it goes on in ordinary life with the average citizen but it also goes on in government um, Americans look we have failed okay we are a moral disgrace we have failed we don't care about the Constitution. We don't care about the psychopaths who lie to us all of the time. And if we've got that delusion going on in our head, we will defend that psychopath. And we will kill off all of the good that keep trying to tell us you're on the wrong side here. You're on the wrong side defending this guy. And he tells you, every single day, who he is. He tells you what he's about. You're just not wanting to see it. Because you want that border wall. My God. Media blackout as Israel's largest banks pay over $1 billion in fines for U.S. tax evasion schemes. Trump, Mr. Israel, Unbelievable how many during the Obama years are coming out strong about everything that was taking place with Israel. It was obvious that Israel was, um, you know, had controls over that administration, controls over Congress. The Trump supporters who were quote unquote awake knew it. Where are they with all of this coming out now? Where are they with Trump handing over, what, an additional billion to Israel in aid? Where are they with Trump recognizing the Golan Heights as Israel's not serious? Where are they with all of the incredibly criminal, immoral, disgusting evil that is committed by Trump. Crickets, that's the awake crowd. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. Human Rights um, Council, the United Nations Human Rights Council accuses Israel of war crimes in Gaza. 
Where's Trump on that? We are insane. What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? They are insane. What can we do? They're insane. Well, one thing you can do is stop supporting insane, murderous, psychopathic criminals who are evil. Hey, stop supporting them. Pompeo clearly believes that this is all part of some divine plan. Yeah, I've had a lot of Christians leave me that comment. God selected Trump to get into the White House. Wow, man. All right, I got to say, God, um, can we have a little conversation about who you're selecting to put into the White House? Trump? Uh, he's a good Christian man, Carol. Oh, really? He's a good Christian man. <laughs> For, yeah, we're done. We are done. This is the awake crowd. This is how they think. Scary. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's view of the possible divine origin of the 2016 election result as a necessary intervention to save the Jews is possibly the most frightening bit of commentary to come out of the Trump national security team. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole lot of frightening going on. Yeah, he was asked if President Trump right now has been sort of raised for such a time as this, like Queen Esther, to help save the Jewish people from an Iranian menace as a Christian. Oh yeah, he's a Christian. Oh, that's right, he's a good Christian. Mike Pompeo. We're lost, okay? The American people are lost, delusional, they're mentally ill and they don't, they can't see clearly. They only see what they want to see. Ah, he's a Christian, that's all I need. Because I'm a Christian, so I identify. Ah, but I'm not going to look at how psychopathic, murderous, uh, and evil is this guy. Ah, yeah. nope, not going to see it. I don't want to see it. He's a Christian. That's all that is necessary. As a Christian, I certainly believe that's possible. A former Kansas senator and CIA director, I am confident that the Lord is at work here. Ha ha ha, really? Well, oh, and then I get the comments. God is in control of everything. God is in control of Satan. God is in control of the weather. God is in control of all of these psychopaths. Don't you understand, Carol? It was written in the book, in the book, in the book. It was written in the book. So you can just sit back and relax, Carol, because all of this was prophesized. And yeah, God is in control. Don't worry. Be happy. That's why we're dying. That's why we're done. Trump CIA now unbound and back to its traditional hijinks. Donald Trump's Central Intelligence Agency has returned to its traditional roots of conducting black bag operations and disrupting electrical grids through cyber attacks. And yeah, Donald Trump, his appointments, you just have to look at these appointments. And no, I will not look at them, Carol. Trump is making America great again. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. In addition to electricity, water service was disrupted in Venezuela. Uh, Venezuela should have been the real wake-up call, even though everything was obvious before that. But no, don't hear from the Trump supporters. Don't hear from them. They just want to believe what they want to believe. It's sad. Very sad. Here, February 22nd, 2019, 10 males, all wearing masks, broke into the North Korean embassy and subjected eight embassy staff members to brutal interrogation tactics, including tying up the diplomats, throwing black bags over their heads, a specialty of Miss Haspel, and subjecting them to beatings. One female diplomat managed to escape through a second floor window and her screams alerted a neighbor 
who promptly called the police. Two embassy employees required medical attention for their injuries. Carol, you're always going to mainstream media articles. Unsubscribe. So, this is a lie written by Wayne Madsen, Strategic Culture, Journal of Strategic Culture. Um, all of this is a lie. Well, that's what people who want to believe something need to believe it, because if they don't believe it, where does that leave them? Holy shit. That means we're on our own. Oh my God. That means I'm going to have to take action to try to stop this evil. Nah, it doesn't. There's an awful lot of people who just sit back and let it happen. It doesn't. But it's important. It's really important, you know, for your own psyche to um, go with the truth always. You know, I understand lies work for an awful lot of people. They love them. But... What does that do to your soul? What does it do to your psyche? It only corrupts it further. So, yeah, it's, it's important to <laughs> always stand with the truth. And um, Haspel is, she is as sick as they get. Trump nominated her. Of course she's gonna bring back all of the tactics but <laughs> were those tactics actually stopped? Probably not. You know, the black ops, the the uh, the CIA just picking up people and flying them anywhere to their torture chambers. Well, that's who Trump nominated. That was his pick. Uh, Let's see, a massive war on autopilot. U.S. airstrike surge and secret war in Somalia. Did you know that we've got this war going on and that Trump has really escalated that air war, you know, all of the drone attacks? Didn't he campaign on ending the unnecessary wars? Well, Amnesty International accuses U.S. of war crimes in Somalia, so what is our? response. Oh, this good Christian guy. Yeah, Pompeo. Trump administration imposes visa ban on staff probing U.S. war crimes. The, um, what is it? The International, um, sorry, International Criminal Court. Yep. <laughs> That's our response. We are so sick and twisted, man. It's frightening. But we got this way because the American people are also sick and twisted. And if they can do some work on their own self to get out of their sick and twistedness and um, get that, you know, look, you can't get anywhere good unless you put truth above everything and you uh, live, you know, you, you're... Truth is what compels you through your daily life. Truth. Um, if you're not doing that, then you know you're you're absolutely on the wrong path. Iraq prepares to evict U.S. troops from the country. No kidding. Wow. Well, that's going to be one hell of a eviction. Um, considering we we built the biggest and most expensive base in Iraq during our invasion in 2003. Woo, boy, what is it, the size of four football fields? <laughs> yeah, we were there because of those weapons of mass destruction. So we invade, bomb the shit out of it. Oh, and remember, it was like watching, you know, some show, Nightly News. And what was, oh God, I can't remember the, uh, 
it, it was so surreal watching the bombing of Iraq. Just so unbelievably surreal. And it was almost as if, you know, Americans were like so glued, you know, like they were getting off on the destruction. Remember those two terms. I can't remember the two terms. It was always on the news, the banner, while we watched the bombing, the destruction of a country. Based on a lie, of course. It was the takeover of yet another country to steal their resources, set up a base in Iraq. Oh, we love our lies. That's it. We love our lies because those lies work for work for us. We get to live comfortably until the evil takes us over. Um, but as long as we're living comfortably every single day, who cares about anything? Just let it roll on. Trump. Leaked audio exposes big oil laughing with joy over cozy access to Trump officials. Unprecedented access given to the highest levels of the Trump administration boasting about their ability to have closed door meetings with top officials and the ascendance of their own industry colleagues to some of the most powerful seats of government, oil and gas executives who belong to the Independent Petroleum Association of America are heard discussing David Bernhard now Deputy Secretary of the Interior and a former industry, uh, industrial uh, lobbyist, industry lobbyist. <laughs> Trump's appointments boy. That's all you need to look at to realize that this guy is so uh, not about making America great again and he's so not about, hey, I, 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 I identify with you Americans and I I really care about you and I'm going to fix this country for you. How naive do you have to be to believe that horseshit? Once again, here he is. He's, he's, <laughs> this guy Bernhardt is his pick to run the interior. God. Yeah, he's been nominated by President Trump to be the next Secretary of Interior with his confirmation hearings scheduled for next week. A room full of laughter. This, uh, the international, is that what it's called? The Independent, sorry, Independent Petroleum Association of America. In the recording described, one meeting with Scott Pruitt, the president's EPA administration uh, administrator at the time, what was expected to be a simple meet and greet quickly became a friendly opportunity for the fellow industry insiders to provide Pruitt with a wish list for deregulation and energy um, agency rule changes. What was really great is there was about four or five EPA staffers there who were all like, write that down, write that down all the way through this. And when we left, I said, that was just our overview. The room, reportedly still laughing, subsequently bragged, it's really a new world for us and very, very helpful. <laughs> Trump himself was a driving force behind deregulating the energy industry, ordering the government in 2017 to weed out federal rules that unnecessarily encumber energy production. Yay! He's doing what he said, Carol. He said he was going to get rid of a lot of those regulations that that hamper American, that, that prevent Americans from succeeding, prevent Americans from opening up their own job. Did you take a look? Did you take a look at what regulations this guy took away? No. No! If I took a look, well, that would mean I'd have a hard time maintaining my delusion. Has he done any lifting of regulations for uh, those regulations that really do prevent 
just ordinary Americans from opening up businesses and no no it's all to help his friends get more and more money Bernhard Trump's pick to run the interior Bernhardt and the lobbying firm he once worked for, Brownstein, Hyatt, Farber, Shrek, have donated almost a million dollars over the last five years to the very senators who will soon vote on his confirmation. We're done. People don't know how to think. People don't stand on principle. Ordinary people. I don't give a shit about these these psychopathic nut jobs. Our only hope, our only hope was with the American people. Look at the condition. Look at the condition of those who refuse to even bother to do any research to find out what's happening. The willfully ignorant. And then look look at this awake crowd. Everybody's sitting back waiting for someone else to fix it. And when the evidence starts rolling in that that person who they believe is going to fix it ain't fixing it, actually making things a whole lot worse, they turn a blind eye. They don't want to know the truth. Look! We have to face our own immorality, how we live. We've got to face ourselves and what we're doing. And when you have a majority of people who will not do that, will not, in fact, I've had people say to me outright, I don't want to grow. I do not want to grow an awake person. You know, we're, we're, we're not getting anywhere. This, this war entails an awful lot of work. And most people are lazy children. So all links are below. Ciao.